Hey everybody, welcome to J. Stern Designs Fitting and Pattern Perfection. I feel like it's time to rev up my pants pattern so I can actually make some long shorts, but I have some issues. Issue number one, I couldn't find my pants pattern from last year and I tried my pants pattern, I mean I tried my pants on that I made last year, my happy pants like knee length shorts, and they are too tight. Um, so I thought I'll start from scratch and then of course my printer wouldn't work and I had a series of technical difficulties. So I'm going to apply some fitting measurements that I've taken on myself to one of my older pants patterns. That, okay. And you can see right here, this, this pattern I have in front of me, um, is a pattern I worked on quite a few years ago now, probably like five years ago. Um, and I made a straight lady pants and a curvy pants, um, considering how different your waist and your hip was. So I'm going to use this as a, a starting point to make a new pants pattern for myself. And what I want to do is apply my measurements and adjust this pattern based on what my measurements are telling me. So I've, I've marked the size I'm going to use, the size 14, and it's in green, just so you can see which size I'm using. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you what my measurements are. I'm going to show you how I would measure for this. So the first thing I'm going to do is this dot right here, we're going to say that this dot along the front crotch curve is where the base of my zipper would be. So I'm going to consider everything above this to be my straight portion of my cur front crotch curve and everything below it is going to be my, um, my curved portion of the front crotch curve. Um, so what I want to do first is I'm going to measure from the top I'm going to draw this in red so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to measure from the top of the pattern to where the base of the zipper is going to be. And actually, I'll start here. I'll get rid of that half inch seam allowance up there. And I get, for a measurement, um, seven, basically. All right, so the this is seven inches. So let me just make a note there. And then I'm going to measure the curved portion. So I'm going to measure the curve portion from here all the way to here. So about a half an inch away from the edge. And I'm going to get um, four and a half. So I'm going to put four and a half over here. Four and a half. Now my front crotch, my front straight my straight portion of my front crotch is eight inches. So I need to add an inch. Add, oops, I'm sorry. Add one inch to the, to the straight portion. My front crotch portion was five. So I need to add a half an inch to the, um, to the curved portion of the front crotch. Okay. So here's some things to consider when if you if you measure your crotch or if you use a flexible ruler and you sort of measure the shape of the crotch and you actually get a shape that you think your crotch looks like that's going to get you close but it doesn't tell the whole story and what i'm discovering is there are other parts on your body that affect the actual measurement of the crotch and the and i like to say the tape measure can't tell because the tape measure isn't um, measuring these other parts. It's just measuring one little skinny line down from your waist through your legs and back up to your waist in the back. So things like um, in the front, the things that would affect the crotch, um, the biggest thing, two things, prominent tummy and um, a athletic front thigh and also a prominent inner thigh too so the shape of your thigh and your the shape of your tummy also can affect the 
length of the crotch curve. So my tummy is just ridiculous right now. It sticks out. It's like a big pooch at the bottom of my, um, you know, at the bottom of my lower tummy. It's just sticking out and it's really, it's, you know, causing problems for my fitting because some of the things I wore last year do not fit me this year because of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to consider those two things. Now I want to show you, okay, you can see right here, this is one of my older patterns that I worked on for myself. And you can see what I did here is I slashed the pattern from the inseam up to where the straight portion of the front crotch curve is. And I tipped this out. And I added about three quarters of an inch here. Yep, three quarters of an inch. And the reason why I did that is because I have a really um, a prominent front thigh. Um, and so what happens is... You can see if your leg bows out in the front, like if you have a big um, muscle in the front, and you know, like I do a lot in the gym, so I have that. My, my front thigh actually curves out in the front. That's gonna create the need for more fabric um, between you know this part of your leg into where the fabric goes in to match the back and so together with the inseam in the back. So you can see here, because I added here, okay, the, um, the crotch length in the front was also lengthened by three quarters of an inch almost. So this is one of the examples of what I mean when I say that the tape measure in measuring your you know, your front crotch doesn't tell the whole story because all of this fat, all of this fabric right here, this fabric right here has to wrap around your inner thigh. And if it's, and if your front crotch extension is not long enough, um, it won't wrap, it won't make room for your inner thigh and to make room for, you know, the fact that your front thigh is taking up room and it's pulling the fabric this way so you need to make more room so that's one of the big things okay if I draw um, a line I'll just do this one in pencil okay you can see here from from about the seam allowance um, where I would actually be stitching these pants straight down this little triangle of fabric I have here is what I have to wrap around my inner thigh. And I have to add a half an inch just to make the measurement from here to here agree with my curved portion of my front crotch. But remember, I also know from experience fitting myself that I have an athletic front thigh here. Okay, so I have this athletic front thigh that, that bows out, so I need to make even more room. So instead of adding just a half an inch, I think I'm gonna add a whole inch. So I'm gonna turn my, um, I'm gonna turn the total amount that I need into, um, well it's four and a half now, five and a half. I'm gonna make it five and a half total. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm just going to extend, just trying to see if I have a different color. Let me see if this light blue works. Okay, so what I'm going to do for right this second is I'm going to draw a line out from the tip of my crotch, and I'm going to add an inch right here. Okay, I want it to go to here. But I'm not going to draw my inner thigh yet. I have to check that. So I just want to add an inch to the, the length of my front crotch curve to get my the length of that to, to agree with what I measured. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the upper thigh of this pattern. So I'm going to measure from here. So I'm measuring a half an inch away from my size, which is about here. Okay, so the front measures um, 13 inches. So this is 13 inches, 
then. I just want to, for now, I, I'll do the back later. I just want to measure the um, the back um, in uh, upper thigh. So I'm just getting a half an inch away. And I'm just going to measure this. Let's measure it a little bit farther down. Let's measure it right here. All right, so right here measures um, 16 and a half. So 16 and a half and 13 gives me 29 and a half inches total for room in my thigh in this pattern. I don't really need to add very much room. How, so I put the crotch out to here. Okay, and I, so I really can't add a whole inch. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw this down, sort of to match my green. Okay, because, and I've added here, now I've added. So what I'm going to do on this side is I'm going to actually start at the full hip, and I'm going to curve this in a little bit. Okay. So see how I've I've gotten rid of a half an inch there. So now I've only added about eh, still still almost an inch. Okay, so um, but I really can't take that in anymore. But do you see what I did? I took off a half an inch on this side, and I added a little bit over here. And you can see that this pattern that I'm working with has almost a straight line on the side. So I feel fine, you know, adding a little bit of a hip curve because I do have a little hip curve. All right, so I've got this shape like this. But I'm going to tell you right now, this is not going to stay like this. And I'll show you how we're going to determine the final shape of the crotch in a minute. Now, another thing that I want to talk about is you've measured your crotch and you've um, you, you really need to look at your silhouette and you need to look at the space that you have um, between your legs this is the only way I can say it so the space between your legs um, you know varies for people and I'm just going to draw a picture here you need the, the width of the wedge right here, between here and here, is what wraps around the leg to take up that space. So like, let's say this is your legs, you know, and, you've, and you've really almost got like a horizontal, not horizontal, but you've really got some space between the, the tops of your legs, okay? This part right here... You know, the, 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 okay, so here's the center front, okay? So to get yourself from the center front to the inseam, okay, where, where that room comes from is how wide this is. So this part that I'm painting blue is, this is the part that gets you from your center front to your inseam. Oh, can you, PG, is it better now that I'm showing you? Um, like if you sit with your pant, like if you put on leggings and sit down in a chair and look, look at the seams, the seams will show you this. Okay, because this is where this fabric is. Now, if you, now I am more shaped like this. So I'm more like this. And I think this is a more common shape for that I see when I do fitting. You know, a little bit less of a, you know, horizontal, you know, a straight plane there. So like if I, you know, scoop this down and I scoop my inner thigh in, and I just have a skinny little angle here, that's not going to make it, you know, that's not going to give you enough fabric. Because I extended this, I added like a wedge of, this wedge here 
is going to give me room for here too. So ha the width of this wedge can help fit a bunch of different things. This pattern, that's a good amount of fullness through my full hip. So because the pattern has enough room for my, you know, my fullest part, because it's giving me two and a half additional inches, I'm not going to push that out anymore. I am just going to lengthen the rise. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to add, I'm going to add that inch that I need at the top. And then I'm going to go back down. Okay, so that's going to be my new front rise. Um, another way to add to the, the front rise would be to cut here and then spread it. All right, this is the back, but let's pretend it's the front. All right, so let's say I cut the pattern here. Okay, and then tip it up. So watch what happens when I do that. If I spread it, what I'm doing is I'm creating a bigger angle. See that? Now, if you have a defined waist, if your waist is more narrow than your tummy and your full hip, that's a really good way to do it because having the angle here will help will help that fit you better. Okay, so what I want you to do is think of your center front seam as a dart. If your center front seam is straight up and down and you zip up your zipper, the rest of the fabric is just going to stay where it is and it'll fit around you. If your center front seam angles, you know, away from the crotch curve. So almost like a, so it's sort of looking like the back, but it's being more subtle. When you zip that up, it makes the side seams at the waist go up because it's zipping it up and the fabric pushes up and around. And that fits really nice on someone with a defined waist because the fabric goes up to the defined waist. If you don't have a defined waist, what happens is when you zip your pants up, the fabric has nowhere to go and you end up with a pooch at the center front. And I know that that happens because I spent the first, I don't know how many months when I was first fitting myself in my first pair of jeans and I always would get this pooch on the, you know, right on the front fly basically. And I thought it was because I wasn't putting my um, front fly, I wasn't putting my zipper in in a good way and I thought it was creating you know some sort of you know loose bump or something but it was because I had an angle to my center front seam and it pushed everything um, back down because I'm very straight and there was nowhere for that fabric to go so that's another thing to consider when you're working with your pattern so if your waist is a similar measurement to your hip having a straight um, center front seam is going to help that fit better. Okay. All right. So having said that, um, if you have a protruding tummy and you really do need um, more room here, you can also bow this out a little. So you can have it come out like this. Um, you can add your extra length and then blend back in. So that would give you more room at center front too. You can only do it about a half an inch though. All right, so you can actually make more room along the center front in addition to not having it be at an angle. Okay, so this now, I'm happy with this for my, my front shape. Oh, so for me, actually, I have to go over here this is my final cutting line. All right. So now what I want to do is I want to look at the back. All right. So now in the back, all right, so I'm just going to get rid of my half an inch here. And I'm just going to measure from here to here. 
Okay, so that measures seven inches. So I need to, this is seven inches. I need to add a half an inch. And then I get I get about seven and a quarter. Okay, so I get seven and a quarter here, and I need it to be ten and a half. So I need to add three and a quarter inches to my to my curved portion. Now I can tell already from this pattern, you can see that this, see, remember when I was talking about the wedge in the front, you know, so the space between here and here, the wedge on this particular pattern is huge. It's, it's very wide. So, um, and the other thing is this, this um, center back seam is very straight. So see how this looks straight up and down? There's no angle. So I know for me, I need to have a little bit more of an angle to fit um, around my butt. So in the back, the, the more prominent your behind is, the more of an angle you can make your center back seam. So, you know, right now it's straight. I know for me, I need it to be at an angle. So I'm going to just angle it like this. Um, and I know that at up at the waist, my waist is a little bit smaller than my tummy where I measured that. So I'll be fine angling it. And then I think what I want to do here is to make a longer in um, a longer crotch seam, I'm actually going to scoop it out. So if I scoop an angle, Okay, that's going to make um, a longer edge, plus it's going to make more room for my butt to sit down. So let me just measure this. Okay, now I'm at eight. To add the, to add the length I need, I'm going to slash my pattern on this line. And I'm going to spread it an inch. And that's also going to tip the top of the pattern over, back a little bit, and it will give me a little bit more of an angle. All right, so my final crotch curve is going to go from here to here. Okay, so see, this is where I added, and then it'll continue to here. And I think that's going to give me the room that I need in my crotch shape. So this is going to be my pattern. Okay. And now what I want to do is show you when you adjust this cur the, the shape of the crotch, I want to show you a final thing that you need to do um, to make sure it sews together and fits properly. If, you, if I line them up without overlapping them for seam allowance, you can see that they peak up a little bit. So it kind of goes up and back. You don't want to have that for a shape at the base of your crotch. You want it to be, you know, more of a smooth front to back. So I'm just going to cut this like that. All right. So you see how we have this nice shape and you can see this is very generous. Okay. I've got a nice crotch curve here. Um, I'm not making, you, know, you also want to keep in mind what your goal is. These are pants. They're not jeans. I don't want a pattern that's going to be snugging onto me and following my contour. For my crotch curve, I've got plenty of room for the fabric to wrap around my leg and um, hang nicely off of my, you know, off of the, the crotch curve and the hip and everything. So the other thing is 
This is my knee down here. Okay, this is my knee here. I'm going to put them together and make sure that the inseams agree. If I walk this along, okay, my inseams match up perfectly. Okay, that's important. Okay, so while you're fiddling around with your crotch points, you want to also make sure that your um, inseams match. So to lengthen this, I can just add an equal amount on both to make the final pattern the length I want. You want to take your front and lay it on top of your back like this. Line your grain lines up. You know, everything between the front and the back seems to agree. Like you can see that these are going to sew together nicely because they're kind of going in the same direction. And this over here, this agrees. Okay, so you can see that the shape of that is very similar. Now, the one thing that is different is my front comes in more than my back up at the top of the waist. Okay, so um, that will change when I sew darts in the back because I will have darts in my back, but I will not have any darts in my front. So um, this pattern looks balanced front to back as well as you know agreeing lengthwise with the inseams. I have to say and I'm going to admit to you I'm very annoyed with myself that I lost my pattern from last year. I haven't touched it in a long time. And you know the fact that I didn't use the happy pants pattern um, you know I, I'm trying to see if my method of fitting translates and basically um, changes the shape of a pants pattern to fit me okay this this straight lady pa pants pattern that I'm working with in this tutorial is something I worked on probably five or six years ago um, so it's not like I crafted this pattern to be my style for my shape and then made a few minor adjustments so I had to really overhaul it to you know get it to do what I think it's gonna do um, and we'll see. So I will definitely give you an update and let you know how it actually fits. And then I think I'll get my happy pants printed and I'll see, I'll compare that to, you know, the shape of that pattern just to see for ha-has. But I'm really trying to fine tune my entire fitting method because I've been playing with it for such a long time now that, um, you know, I just want to have a very simplified method. And I think the way to simplify it is to consider everything before you start. So, you know, consider the length of your crotch curve, consider any um, fitting or shape things that you have that you need to adjust for as well. So um, that's been giving me really good results. So I will update you on this next week. One last thing, I'm gonna put an, probably an inch and a half extra side seam. So I'll, I'll have a two, two inch side seam allowance so I have room to let it out if I need to because I'll probably have to scoop a little to pick up some of the fabric under the crotch along the inseam I'm guessing. So that's the other thing I will do to this before I cut it out. So that's my plan for these pants. Um, if you have questions please let me know and I will see you next week.